By God, I cannot flatter, I do defy the tongues of soothers. But a braver place in my heart's love hath no man than yourself. Thou art the king of honor. These letters come from your father. He cannot come, my lord, for he is grievous ill. How is he the leisure to be sick in such a jostling time? Under whose government come they along? His health was never better worse than now. He gave us bold advertisement that, well, with our small conjunction, we shall not see how to fortune is disposed so. Your father's sickness is to a main to us. A perilous gash, a very limb lopped off, and yet, in faith it is not. His present once seems more than we shall find it. This absence of your father's draw a curtain that shows the ignorant a kind of fear before not dreamt of. Then if he earl were here, for men most think, if we without this help can make a head to push against a kingdom, with his help we shall overturn its tossy-turvy down. Oh, my cousin Vernon! Oh, hey, to my soul! Hello! Ah. The Earl of Westmoreland, seven thousand strong, is marching hitherwards with him, Prince John. The king himself in person is set forth with strong and mighty preparation. Where's his son, the nimble-footed make-up prince of Wales, and his comrades, the death of the world aside and bid it pass? All furnished, all in arms, I saw young Harry with his beaver on, his cushions on his thighs, rise from the ground like feathered mick. They come like sacrifice in their trim, and to the fire-eyed maid of smoky war, all hot and bleeding, we will offer them. Come, let me taste my horse, who has bare me like a thunderbolt against the bosom of the Prince of Wales. I learned in Worcester, as I rode along, he cannot draw his power, this fortune, that bears a frosty sound. My father and Glendower being both away, the powers of us may serve so great a day, die all, die merrily. <coughs> Get thee before Coventry. Fear me a bottle of sack. Our soldiers shall march through. Well to Sutton called Fields tonight. Well you give me the money, Captain. Lay out, lay out. Bid my Lieutenant Peto meet me at Townsend. <laughs> I will, Captain, farewell. If I be not ashamed of my soldiers, I am a sow's gurnet. I have misused the king's press. Damn it, I press me none but good householders, young men's sons. I press me none but such toasts and butter. With hearts in their bellies, no bigger than pins. And, and they have bought out their services. And now my whole charge consists of anxious corporals, lieutenants, gentlemen of companies, slaves as ragged as Lazarus in the painted cloth, where the glutton's dog licked his sword, and such as indeed were never soldiers but discarded, unjust serving men, and such I have I to fill up the rooms of them that have bought out their services. No eye hath seen such scarecrows. I not march through Coventry with them. That's flat. <laughs> how now, blown Jack? How now, Quilt? What hell? How now, mad wag? What the devil dost thou and walk work shot? The king, I can tell you, looks for us all. We must away all night. Tell me, Jack. Whose fellows are those that come at? Mine, hell. Mine. I did never see such pitiful rascals. Top, top, good enough. Tipus, food for powder, food for powder. Thou flip it as well as, as any better. Tush, men, mortal men, mortal men. Aye, but Sir John, methinks they are exceeding poor and bare, too beggarly. Faith. For their poverty. I know not where they had that, and for their bears, I am sure, they never learned that of me. What is the king encamped? He is, Sir John. I fear we shall stay too long. 
We'll fight with him tonight! It may not be, good cousin. Be advised. Stir not tonight. Do not, my lord! You do not counsel well. You speak it out of fear and cold heart. Tonight, say I. Come, come it may not be, being men of such great leading you are, that you foresee not what impediments drag back our expedition. The number of the kind exceedeth ours. For God's sake, cousin, stay till all come in. Welcome, Sir Walter Blunt. Some of us love you well, and even though some envy your great deservings, and good name, because you are not of our quality, but stand against us, against us like an enemy. You say nothing against the knight of majesty, but to my charge. My father, my father and my uncle, myself did give him that same royalty he wears. My father gave him welcome to the shore, and when he had heard him swear vow to God, he came, but to be Duke of Lancaster. My father swore him assistance and performed it too. Thus I came not to hear this. Then to the point. He broke oath to oath, committed wrong on wrong, and in conclusion drove us to seek out the head of safety. And with all to pry into his title, the which we find too indirect to long continue. Shall I return this answer to the king? Not so, Sir Walter. We'll withdraw one. Like enough you do. Tomorrow, good Sir Michael, is a day wherein the fortune of ten thousand men must hide the trap, the touch. For, sir, a true berry as I truly given to understand, I fear the power of Percy is too weak to wage an imperative trial with the king. There is Douglas and Lord Mortimer. There is more Dick Vernon, Lord Harry Percy, and there is my Lord of Worcester, and a uh, head of Gallic lawyers. No good gentlemen. I hope no less. Yet need feel, tis to fear and to prevent the worst, Sir Michael. Speed. Therefore make haste. I must go right again to other friends, and so farewell, Sir Michael. Farewell.